Continuing installing over $10,000 in parts, our boxes are slowly dwindling. Today we're going to knock out a bunch of these, but we have a big install today of doing a full carbon makeover and doing some functional pieces to make the car easier to work on. Check some levels. I'm excited to get into it. Let's show you up close and unbox these things, install them, go have some fun, and maybe we'll work on Parker's car today also. All of these ECS tuning parts, there's links in the description if you ever go buy stuff affiliate link in the description that helps support the channel to help us keep making these videos. Mm. Carbon mirror caps. This looks like the carbon expansion tank. Billet washer fluid reservoir cap in here. That looks nice. Yeah, nice little addition. Dipstick, billet one. Where's oh, those thing? are support braces that cover the under the hood. Nice little flare. Fuse box overlay to match. Battery lid. What is this? That's the hood strut conversion. Oh, so you don't have to use the... The, the stick. This is pretty crazy. Big piece. I feel like most people wouldn't go out of their way to buy this. Maybe they would. But if you get this car on Cars and Bids, they'll have an early sign-up link so you get notified when this car goes up for sale and for auction. Like when it comes like with a part like this, I feel like this is kind of the pro to buying a car that's been on the channel. Is you get super extra things like this that are expensive. Carbon engine cover. That's a fat piece of carbon. Yeah, that's huge. Not even a place to put this. I don't think our table's big enough. It's a good problem to have. Well, that's the battery cover kit. It goes like this of some sort to cover the battery. Now for the large boxes. Sweet. Mm. I want to see what this looks like. This is a chunky piece. Like I know it's like this looks thick. like it could handle a lot of, yeah. of curb slapping. Hmm. Nice. I like that. With stock height fitment. Oh. It'll probably make it like look like less high because it like makes the yeah like the body goes lower. Oh yeah, that's a big part of this I need, video I need to address out of the gate is lowering springs delayed. It'll be in the next episode, so it might be a little bit cringe for a little bit longer with monster truck height. It's like, if you weren't triggered already that we haven't lowered it, it's just gonna get worse by the end of this episode. <laughs> mm. That's sick. This is a big piece. It looks like it's for like a freaking F1 car. <laughs> yeah, that'll be nice. If the back end didn't look aggressive already, I know it's gonna look good. On this generation, now it looks this even This with the carbon exhaust tips. Mm. We're gonna do everything we can in the garage because it is hot as hell out here in Arizona. Editor Justin, can you start throwing for the audience the temperature of the day? Because the last video was like 111 and I was complaining and I was like, wow, if you didn't know, I look like a little, little complainer. It was hot. But right here, let's start here. Mirror, side-by-side -side comparison. Come on, this should be pretty simple. Let's get into it. First things first, let's push the mirror down as much as I can to get some leverage in there. I have plastic pry tools, so I'm gonna get back up in here. Try and get my finger back there. This is never fun, but it's just a necessary evil. So like that looks like if I push it up in that corner, I can get to this. That mirror just broke. Are you kidding me? That corner's weak. I've never had that happen. I don't even want to show that. <laughs> Let's just leave it in. Let's just leave it in. Pause. Okay, so <laughs> this is why I make these videos so you guys don't have to do this. Don't pull on this corner at all. Really got to get the pressure from the top right corner or else you'll break it. Yeah, so that sucks. 
Uh, okay, so continued on. Um, now we're looking for clips up in here. So having something like this is really key. So I'm gonna push this here. It's gonna be hard for you to see. So that silver tab, we can very carefully push down on that silver tab and this one. So before I do that, what I wanna do is very carefully take my non-marring pry tool and just start kind of getting some pressure on the outside right here with my finger. And then I'm gonna go back in here and get this to release. And see now that corner, this corner is now released. So I'm gonna keep the tension on it with just my hand and go to this top corner and push down. And then just like that, it pops out. Now we have a little cord right here for this indicator light. That comes out with a little button you press down, super straightforward. Now these indicator lights, these get transferred. So just like the S4 we just did, if you were there for that series, this tab right here, this big thing, push down with your thumb and then press in and this will just totally slide out of here. Just like that. So let's put this indicator light in the carbon one. Put our plug part through first. And this can slide in in the reverse way it went in. Bada bing, bada boo. Clips in like that. Gets really easy from here. Let's plug our cable back in. We heard the click. Thought that was the wrong side for a sec, lol. All right, so now we just gotta line it up. Usually this top corner likes to give you a hard time. Okay, I got that top corner in. Now I can work my way out. It's like those chiropractor videos. <laughs> All right, just right, deep breath. And then you end up like this. <laughs> Gosh, it's so close. This is typical carbon fiber struggles. Ooh, that looks like it did something. I'm like looking at the clips where it grabs on. It's like a millimeter. Freaking rip them here off. <laughs> oh my gosh. This will be a funny reel. <laughs> Cabin five Cabin five It's like a peg like this, and it just needs to go and then lock in like a trailer. And it's just sitting there like that, and it just needs to go. Mm. It's so close. Let's see if we can get the other one to snap in. No reason in continuing to fight this one. It's amazing how much smoother it goes the second time, just prying from this top right corner instead of the outside. Is how to do that mirror. Then we're gonna outward pressure. Pull those tabs. Push this in. Plug it in, plug it in. Get ready for war. UFC 360. Fight. Carbon fiber. Carbon fiber versus Cam. Oh, I might have figured out the trick. Oh. Okay, let's see if we can try that trick on the other side. So this inner one, if I stick my finger up and support that tab and pull up slightly. Oh, it worked. Okay, so how do I verbalize this? There's a tab out of the factory mirror like this, and then you have your fork from the carbon fiber, and it wants to sit right here, but you need it to go like a trailer. So this little fork, if you put your finger underneath it and support it and help it oomph in there on the top corner first, then you can snap in the rest. Yep, that one went in easy. So that you really need that to make that fit. So now you know how to snap that in easy and also how not to remove a side view mirror. How does it look? Looks good. It looks fancy. Yeah, this looks nice. It like makes like the tent like look 
clean, like the the dark tint, like look like, I don't know. It's pulling the, the darker tones. Yeah, it makes the dark tones pop. Yeah. All right, so what else we got? Just all engine based stuff now? All right, so start with the easy stuff. This should be the expansion tank cover. You just pull the adhesive off. Something important to note, there is a cutout so that you can see the level of the coolant even when you put a cover over it. That's mm. a topic of discussion. Just figure out the orientation, how it's gonna go, then pull off your adhesive and then put it on there. You should probably wipe it down with like alcohol. Yeah, here. So it sticks. We have to take what, this this tube off too. You do? Yeah. So I like get a rag and some uh, some pliers. Oh, it's a hose clamp. You might need these too. Now what I would do, and lightly twist it to break it loose first, then it should slide off. There you go. Beautiful. Oh, now just do it by hand. Three of 800 to go for the day, yes. All right. This was the part you can't mess up. I mean, it honestly doesn't even need the sticky. It's just a nice little plus. Yeah. Just in case, like, you, like, what roll if... eight times, it's not gonna come off. Yeah, yeah. That, that's easy to get off. Yeah, if you roll the car, you know, you, at least yeah. you can salvage this piece. Yeah. Right, right, right. You right. can resell it on yeah. Facebook if the, you total the car. Yeah, you gotta reclaim your losses, you know? Like, factory. Hmm, what's next? Let's just get it over with. Battery cover. We gotta figure out what that corner is. This... I think it... It literally looks like one bowl. <laughs> yeah, it's actually, it's right here. Uh, I think we're gonna see <laughs> All right, you want me to just, you wanna trade it? I'm just gonna go sicko mode. Go X Games mode on me. All right. Pause. Not on me. Not on me. On the car. On the car. Okay, yeah, yeah, we're clear. <laughs> just rewind last video and you'll know what to do. <laughs> that might be enough room. I'm gonna disconnect the battery. What was that? Oops. <laughs> That's the bolt we need. I think so. What is it, Captain? 13 mil. I like that insulation could stay. I just don't know how we get like this hook like past the that. This 13 mil bolt up front that the housing for this cover holder goes through. When I tighten that, the battery torques a little bit because the battery has like a tongue on it and it slides into place and that bolt is going to hold this into the car. So we lose this top tie down, but that's okay. It's, it's not necessary. So then we'll get our positive terminal back on. Tight. Grab the carbon fiber. It's gonna be really dark and tight up here. Yeah, yo. Hey. But you gotta get those clamps on the outside of the carbon fiber. It's kind of a fun dance. That one, that one, that one. Oh, I got them all. Wow. Yeah, why is it now I just need to slide it into place. Looks like a little lunchbox. Yeah. That actually looks great. That's a win. Good. Okay, so now the next part, I'm going two for one. ECU fuse box cover. So if you're wondering how this works, it's only glued to the fuse box cover and then you have, you have access to these pieces. So when you need to get access to the ECU or the fuse box, all you gotta do is press that tab. And what happens is, is this is glued on like this. So you'd pull it off, access your fuse box, it would open up the ECU and then back, it's all covered super clean. So you can still access the clips when it's on. Yeah. I'm gonna wash this with the... Just spray the whole engine bay with that and then start it. Yeah, preferably. We use alcohol because it dries really fast and it gets rid of anything on the surface. All right, now for the fun part. 
Hmm. He's a pro. There's like eight on this thing. I'm gonna stab it and lift. Pierce it and pull. Oh, freebie. This has got to be the most unnecessary video in the on the channel. Just blowing money on carbon fiber. <laughs> hey, because that's why we do what we do, boy. One thing I noticed is that this corner, this metal bracket that was used for that extra tie down is kind of in the way. But this will just kind of fall where it needs to. And it's going to do what it do. And that's about all you can do, is do what it do. Now we just never touch it again. Yeah, now you just <laughs> sell it. Just don't work on your car, bro. It looks super clean though, like it's just one big flat surface right there. All right, Park, do you wanna do braces or are you gonna choose the hood strut conversion? Are you gonna choose a dead bee? Dude, that looks like a- Like it'd be in a museum. Al albino. Is that an albino bee? I think bro's just been dead out for a while. It's kind of <laughs> cute. Let's do the, let's do the braces. Ooh, he wants the difficult one. All right. Let's do the braces. Brace face. All right, this so, so this is my channel now. <laughs> All right, one of these torques. It's a T30. Why don't you lay one of those braces over it to see which bolts we need to take out? Bro, I did have the right side. So, just one, two, two, just these four. Eight, four, yeah. It's four torques. Does it go over it or does it Wait, replace we got, it? We got something in here. I think it probably replaces it because yeah. it has this cut out. But we have to get this off because what is that in there? Oh, it's just like a bracket. Can you just take the... Oh. Just then you holds, can just push... It just holds the... The hood, the hood release. Yeah. Got him. Just needs a little bit of force. This one doesn't have like the same hole though. Can it just sit in there? I mean, it can go on. That's fine. Snug them up. Solid. Nice. Uh oh, we got something different going on over here. Oh boy. Look at it going on here. Brother, ooh. Guess you're doing the hood strut first, huh? Yeah, I guess so. I wanna pause and slow down the video for a second. A gentleman named John M, one of you watching on the side of the screen, you know who you are, I just wanted to give him a little shout. He sent me a really, really, really nice email with encouragement, talked about what he had going on and how he caught that Parker and I were going to church camp. I was a, I'm was a youth leader for a small group and Parker's 10 years younger than me. He was partaking in his last year of like a high school camp. We both had a great time, me as a leader, Parker as someone attending the camp with all his homies and bonding over faith and stuff like that and I'm just super passionate about men's mental health and in the youth old doesn't matter it's something I study non-stop and uh, when Parker and I were talking about this email that meant a lot to me and to him as well Parker was like you should share what your reaction was to me and and getting this nice email explaining what he was going through and how we were impacting and how the videos are something to watch when he's going through a hard time is something that means a lot to me it helps me keep pushing forward I do this because I enjoy it and have a great time with Parker or myself working on cars and connecting with you on the other side of the screen but at the end of the day it just reminds me like there's nothing that sets me on fire more than seeing uh, other guys push through the difficult times in life and I recently am coming out of a really gnarly season of life where I had death challenges Parker had his own challenges going on that were bonding through and whatnot so I just want to take a second to acknowledge John. Thank you so much. If you guys ever want to email me, that's Cameron Alfred at karmaspeed.com if you ever want to connect. That's the best way to get a hold of me. And if you have anything that you've ever read or seen, watched around men's mental health or passion and drive and ambition, email to me, just share it with me. I'm listening to books all the time, videos and such, and me and Parker bond over it as well. So I just want to take a quick moment to pause for that. It's important. That's really important to me. And Parker made me realize that while we were talking about this email. So we'll get back to the video, but I just want to stop and slow down for that. We're back where we left off. Got our knob for the 
Hood strut? The bonnet. Is that the I bag? mean, that would be the hood. Yeah. All right, let's get the paper trick out here. Step one, poke, a, wa poke a washer through the gold. Okay, so is that a 13? Is that what that is? I'd, I'd say so. <laughs> All right, so use the paper and try and smash that 13. Oh my gosh, what a blessing right there. It's you almost like we know what we're doing. You can show them what that's for. I mean, you could still technically drop it forever gone. Does this go on the back side? Yep. All right, fellas. Is it, is it under there? Oh yeah, I see, yeah. All right, so this. Washer on the back side. Dang, that's deep in there. Are you sure it's this hole? I don't know. You're the one that was confident. That's why it has such big washers. How do you reach that? Do the back side first and slide it till you can see the hole and then just poke it through. Oh, yeah. Okay. Now, now wrench me. Oh. That's pretty sketch. Like, do you realize there's zero room for error? I just go to the bottom of the hood. <laughs> Get that out. I mean, I just want to let you learn, dog. <laughs> Try seeing if you could feel it. Don't get too handsy with it. Just see if you could feel it with that, if that's going to get you deep enough. I think it's like right here. I always wondered when I need this tool. All right, get this thing right side up. <laughs> hey little buddy. Yeah, so I just need to get like some sort of rod. Three hours later. If you don't have one of these, this just saved us. It's like a little reach around claw. So I'm gonna push this button and it opens up that claw and that's what grabbed onto this. This thing is huge. It's on the main Amazon list in the description for all the tools. You'll see this on there. Having this just saved us so much time. Do you want to do it again, or do you want me to try it, or what do you what do you what do you think is the move? Okay. At least this stuff falls in this time. We're even. Where I really just said that. <laughs> Ooh, my hands are a little sweaty. No gloves. Baby thirteen. Let's see what I can do. Thirteen on the outside, right? Here. So I just need to get this on the back side. I want to do the long one. I'm gonna secure the back side first. All right, cool. So this little nub right here, it's already here. Just nice and easy. Take this one out. Bada bing, bada boo. Let's make sure really slowly. No tools, everything's out of the way. I'll make sure the hood closes correctly. All the way down. Yeah, hood gap and everything's good. Perfect. Now the hood will raise itself. Awesome. So there is a lock nut on the back side that has nylon in it, so that won't vibrate loose. So that's a good little detail. Now we can pick up where Parker left off with the passenger side brace. Back to scheduled programming. Let's not drop any more right now. Careful you speaking for. Yeah, me. <laughs> Looks like normally you would have to take this bushing out for the, keep the hood out, but you know, the new one, so you can probably just leave it in there, huh? Yeah, that's fine. Just 
pulls off. Wait, let me put the screen back in. Oily hands. <laughs> Stressed hands. Before we do the last piece, the engine cover, let's get the intake back on. This little piece right here for the hood strut, I'm gonna try and get under here with a plastic clip tool and eat lightly pry it out. I actually salvaged it. It's not busted. No more ye ugly yellow. We yeah. have no more yellow. Oh, the Dixit, the dipstick. Dipstick, yeah, go get me that real quick. Just gotta make sure, you know. Just gotta make sure. Mmm, that's a nice little detail right there. No more yellow in here. Cherry on top. Mmm, that was nice. Well, that's, that's good with the 034 cap right there, too. Almost looks like an EV now, it's so clean. It really does. It looks like a battery. <laughs> Dude, that looks good. Dipstick really is like the cherry on top right there. Like a little CS round logo right there. Yeah, Karma Speed logo. I do need to have, uh, talk to Devin about this, making uh, little metal plates, like trophies like you would have on there. And pl like a plaque inside the door jam have Karma yeah. Speed Edition for every car that we modify. And then have like your signature on it. Yeah. This is absolutely an unnecessary amount of carbon, but I'm here for it. It looks nice. Uh, it just looks like someone <laughs> With way too much money, you bought like the wrong car. <laughs> you bought an intake downpipe in tune, and then it's just boredom from there. It kicks in, and then it just looks like this. Parker's Focus ST, we're gonna do a little bit of a side quest. We're gonna be putting this Go Fast Bits diverter valve on it, so maybe we can get some more turbo floaters, some more noises, and let's see how loud it actually is. Box in a box, a little slide out here. Oh, sticker, very important. Diagram, and we got some instructions. Nice little foam box here. Looks like we gotta put it together. <laughs> yeah, they're simple. My hope for Parker was that this will add some unique turbo flutter to his car and... Much needed. Yeah, it already has a lot of turbo noise and the exhaust is loud, but yeah. this might just be a little spice. This might just be when people get in the car and they're like, oh, it's got a turbo, huh? Because people that wouldn't know will know now. If you want to order this, you can grab it from the link in the description, karmaspeed.com. I got this for Parker. Karma Speed has this. If you end up liking it for your ST, if you happen to be watching this video from the Golf series, that's a vacuum line. So it decides to open and close the valve based off vacuum pressure. That's how that works. It looks like you're like, yeah, yeah, you have to take that out. Yeah, and then you just use that temporarily yeah. to hold it all together. Wait, there's one on it. What? Yeah. The same one? No, that's Turbo Smart. No, yeah. No wonder this car sounded extra sick when you put an intake on it. Yeah, it's not that loud though. I mean, it sounds good though. Yeah, it does sound good. It sounds more. It doesn't sound stock. Yeah, exactly. Really tough spot to see. We're getting Wally out. Got it. Now we need the the Allen's three Allen's. <laughs> Well, Wally just got hit with a got a fat lip now. Oh, oh that one was quite loose. Safety first. Oh no, they're Harbor Freight. Hey, they're aluminum though. <laughs> Alright bro, where's that third bolt? Oh, it's literally right on top. Is that it? Yeah, take okay. the ratchet off and then spin it with your hands. Now we're gonna take the, off that wire bracket off the the mount. <laughs> Excuse me, with um, dealing with everything we have to do with, uh, look. <laughs> 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 
It's taking the wire off the bracket. We're gonna we're gonna take the bracket we're off gonna... the wire and unplug the bracket from the wire. And we're gonna connect the positive to the negative. Negative to positive. Alright, alright, bro. We're gonna take that wire off the bracket. Alright, bet, 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 big bets, boy. I right, hit it. You probably have to move now because I can't reach it. Hit it, John. Get that bracket off that wire, son. Did it come off? No, I, I can't see. The most invasive camera of all time. Wally. Oh, you got it's it. So old. It's way, like, longer. Yeah. Now we gotta take out this Allen to get this temporary tool in to pull the piston in. So when we put it in, so we're gonna unscrew that. Is it the same five? Try it. Yeah, maybe. Five millimeter, take out the... So this is adjustable. So you can make the spring pressure a lot, a little. Take this dude. Yeah, it's holding that plunger. <laughs> plunger? Yeah. I would put the bolt on the end of the ball head and try and thread it in by hand and like push it over. Yes sir, there's one. Just snug because that over. Parentheses turbo fluttering. Look here, right? To explain further, I'm trying to put it in the gas bridge. Bro, stop laughing. Let the turbo fluttering. He's gonna put it all the way loose. He wants that search. Two hours later. I'm not really sure. <laughs> Stop, come on. What does that say? It says, it's saying that when it's tight, it's gonna have the least amount of compressor surge and... Which is the most throttle response. Not cause compressor surge. Parentheses, turbo fluttering. Does not? Yeah. By loosening it, it says? No, all the way tight. So you want that gel all the way out then? Yes. And then it goes to say, but also it doesn't affect the boost pressure, so therefore, if you want to make it looser, go for it. So how much is too loose though? <laughs> I, I would just find out what's feeling snug and then back it out a couple and we'll test it. Alright, that's all the way. Alright, so back it out four or five turns. At least. Is like it that? sketchy loose though? No. Okay. It's okay. like loose, but it's not going to wobble out loose. Alright, cool. But now we got to put the vacuum line on. Yeah. Can you adjust that bolt without taking that line off? Yeah. Okay. Just let her down now. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it's been too long of a day to be joking anymore. <laughs> I'm joked out. You got to be joking. You got to be telling me how many bots are in these comments right when we upload. Just booty bots. The freaking booty bots are like, oh my gosh, your content is so mesmerizing. You really just inspire me. Click the link. <laughs> All right, put it on three and give us a little bit. Watch the socket and make sure it just turns just a little bit. It's so straight pipe and we can't hear it. Classic ending to a modification video. I need to loosen it a lot. Well, another quality install, can't feel the difference. Well, real test, I just need to stand outside the car and you like do a pull towards me. If that don't work, then we gotta loosen that bolt more. Well, we might just need to get Junior a muffler. 
Parker has a PSA because he's in charge of merchandise now. Put in the comments if you mess with the more boxy fit, the like thick collar. I've been I've been testing out some samples, so let me know in the comments if you mess with these shirts. <laughs> I'll get you all right with some drip if you just let me know. That's not the design though. That's just temp, right? Yeah, this is just like a test to. Yeah, we're just. Yeah, this is it. <laughs> Yeah, this is just like a test like logo for a print to see if the print quality is good. But the, the tee is comfy and it's like a perfect fit. I like my sleeves a little extra boxy, but this is a pretty safe option. If you're watching the videos and you're like, he's dripped out, then let me know in the comments what you think of the sample. And it's not too boxy for me at 27 years old to rock either. I tested it out. I was a little concerned. Can't be caught looking like a 17 year old at 27. And I can confirm I listen not like a kook in it but Parker's gonna come up with a fresh design if you like that what he's talking about we'll throw it on I can't tell if I'm actually loosening it oh there it goes Should it Why is it not doing it? Did you get that vacuum line on there good? Yeah. It should be like crazy loud. Oh my gosh, chill dude. <laughs> what the heck? That video we watched for a second to look at the, how that was set up to make sure I double checked, he was like crazy flutter. So I'm wondering if that vacuum line's not pulling vacuum to like release it. This exhaust is actually that loud. Look, listen, from up there. that we're looking forward to making a car quieter. Kind of. <laughs> Never thought this day would come. <laughs> uh, only you. <laughs> Sounds good though. No, we need to get a fat intake is what we need yeah. because it would be so much louder with an intake. It's already loud, but to get it to push through to the cab, we should. I should ask Jacob to see if he still has the cowl intake. We should get that off yeah. him. That thing's crazy. <laughs> so hot. First things first, I'm seeing a little bit of a torque situation here. It's small. First try, T15. This is not the most common torque size. They use this little type of plastic holder. Uh, what you would call this fastener. Oh, interesting, never seen that on a Volkswagen Audi before. Okay, that's step one. Let's assess what's going on elsewhere. Pulling this out. Oh yeah, let's go to the other side. Let's just pull it out. Just slowly, gradually pull. This is actually a perk of doing this when it's 110 out. Classic so soft. Yeah. Rear diffuser delete. Yeah, let's just run it like that. Now we just need a turbo here and a turbo here. <laughs> we'll do a little trick. I don't know if Parker knows about this. Something like this. Just leave it exposed. So then you can still shimmy it. And then when you get the right spot, you just pull it out and then push it up. So I'm gonna do this on both sides. I did this in the front lip of the S4 and it really did help me. Go over here. It's like, all right, relax, relax. Okay, and breathe. Okay, I like that. This looks good up top. We're ready to go back down low. Oh, I see our perfectly accessible, wow, drawstrings there. 
All right, let's see what we're working with. I want to get these brackets figured out first. Yeah, that's... Then it looks like we got self-tappers to do here. Self-tappers and the brackets so we can get it from here to here. Okay, so I have this bracket. I'm just seeing how this will fit in here. And it looks like the bolt goes through here to the threaded piece and it looks like we could use the OEM clip here. Let's try that. These fasteners that we took off that I had never seen before, these can pop back into these brackets from ECS. Bro, it's like so insanely hot. <laughs> Let's pull it up on my phone. I'm like drenched. We haven't even been out here long at all. Been out here for like five minutes, literally running down my face. It's currently 108 and it's only gonna go up one more degree. Insane swass. The two brackets that keep us firm and sturdy, you need this little hardware bag right here. Four millimeter Allen head bolts. You got some washers, you got some nuts. So these will go in here like that. There's thread here, that's nice. These holes to go to the factory mounting spot, we're gonna use bolt, and then we're gonna use a washer again, and then these locking nuts with nylon. That blue spot is nylon, rubber, so when vibration happens, this thing doesn't come loose. If you've never seen that before, this is when I wanna be like, cause we're all about building confidence in the garage here at Karma Speed, but I get absolutely roasted for that in person, so. Really? Yeah, hey, but low key, like, everyone loves that. What do people say? They'd be like, oh, building confidence in the garage, huh, Cam? I'm like, yeah, dude, sick. So you just say, I'm so confident, I don't care about your opinion. Yeah, I'm clearly insecure about this. <laughs> we got an interesting contraption going on here, folks. Four mil, and then the nut is a 10. Let's do the math. That nut's a 10? Is this gonna fit? This nut's a 10 out of 10. I don't know what's worse, the glove being slippery or my sweaty hands. Okay, hardest part's done. <laughs> so now, so while that's loose, I'm gonna get this started. Start threading in the bottom. Now I can tighten this one. Oh dear, dear Lord, I need a ratcheting wrench up in there. Can't be doing that. Right at. Okay, so let's get the Allen on the back side. Oh yeah. Around the world, around. Two days later. <sighs> one down, one to go. All right, now just, oh, just. Wait, let's still give us a little nice little tuggy. Just snap and then the other one's on. No need to see two of the same thing. Will you snap? Three, two, one, boop. Oh, there we go. Nice and firm. This thing doesn't move even a millimeter. We're on to the last phase, pulling off my red string. And just push her up. Push it up. Now we have the self-tappers. There's four. So if you're ever wondering when you buy these parts from ECS with the links in the description, because they help out the channel, if you ever need to figure out what hardware is for what, if you ordered a bunch of stuff like we did, you can just go to the product listing on their site and it says uh, kit includes, and then it has a list of like every single bolt with every single part number. So you get all these packages, you're like, wow, I wish they would have put it in one bag or whatever. Actually, when you use the website the way it was built, it's, it makes life so easy to figure out what is for what. Because we got a big bag of hardware and we very quickly were like, oh, this is for the rear diffuser, this is for the front lip, da 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 da. So now we have some Torx bits. Looks like a T20 or T25. That's like a, maybe a T30. T25 should have stuck to my gut. This is really straightforward. Screw bolt in. Take screw. Just get her going a little, a little nice and slow. Give her a little RPM. And then once it goes, it goes. That's firm, just takes a little bit of time. If you took these out and you put their stock OEM diffuser back on, no one would ever know there's two holes there in the rear bumper. It's never gonna cause a problem, so this shouldn't scare you at all. You'll never see it. You'll never see it. We're firm in the center, we're firm on the outside. It's not gonna come off at speed. It's not gonna come off when you wash it. It's on here forever. Parker and I are gonna have to follow up with some ceramic coating on this. And now we can move on to the front. There's always adhesive with front lips, so I have my isopropyl alcohol. I'm just doing a real thorough wipe job on this. Wherever I know I might have some contact. There are some rib nuts going on here and adhesive, so I'm getting a good clean. 
so the adhesive spots are going to be good and i have a rib nut tool showing up any second that makes this job a lot easier i'll have in the description as well our tool showed up it was on prime bleed we got a whole kit here yeah this is great there are cheap versions of this tool but i have found it just bites you in the butt what do these do should be different attachments to diff different size mm -hmm. open one of those let me see it's like a looks like a kid's toy it's like a highlighter pack mm. cool got our f80 m3 m4 m5 i don't think there's an m6 is there i don't think so m8 m24 legends of zelda to make sure you do your rib nuts up here properly, I have a paint marker. We're gonna line it up and start at the edge of the bumper, your side's straight. This is actually the best fitting front lip I've ever seen in general. And most of them have gotten them from ECS over the years and of all the front lips and this thing fits great. So you mark that with the paint marker, keeping everything in place, marking the center one and then this one right here. And then we can lower it and our paint markers are there so that we know where to drill got the rib nuts. And the rest of the screws are self tappers. And what's also cool, where the rib nuts go is not actually on the gloss part of the bumper. You can see it right here, here and here. This is like that more rough texture looking stuff underneath. So that's a win, win, win. We have a little baby drill bit just to start a pilot hole. Good thing we have a paint mark. If you don't have a paint marker, it's on our major Amazon list. Oh, the precision though. We're up to five sixteenths. You can always go bigger, like Parker said. It's too easy. We're gonna see if this will fit. I feel like I should waller this one out. Wallering this out a little bit instead of going to the next drill bit size. Drill through a little bit of metal and you'll hit a little bracket and you can put a hole through it, no big deal. Come over here. Bada bing, bada boo. Here's the style of rib nut that it comes with. Here's the style in the kit that I bought. These are actually easier to install. Yeah, it's annoying having to buy a tool, but I'm gonna do this the way I know works well and that I know will last long on the car. So you get this tool set up, you put your rib nut on there. Then we're gonna walk over to the car. I already did one to make sure it's good. You're gonna slide it up in here. You're gonna press it till it's firm. Okay, it's on, release. And then I'm gonna unscrew my tool. Mm. Boom, clean. Take my next rib nut, number three. force it boom booyah baby if you want a front lip that doesn't come off on the freeway you need to have rib nut game strong like this trust me the final boss drill bit we used was 5 16 wallered out just a little bit fits these really nice just know that that's that now we have our three bolts this is a four millimeter allen head now parker and i can put the front lip on and screw these in and it'll hold itself up Oh wow, these even have a really tight fit, that's nice. Oh yeah, nice. This thing ain't going nowhere with real. Yeah, for real. And it doesn't even look bad. Uh -uh. Like normally when you have this type of setup- Looky looks, looks factory. Like usually you're sacrificing some sort of clean lines with a front lip, but this one is very not invasive. Then you just gotta play a game of not cross threading your rib nuts. I cannot stress this enough. With rib nuts, you want to tighten them until they are snug. Not even really tight, like snug. Like I'm not even getting them until they stop even under my own arm power. Because the rib nuts are in plastic, they are not in metal like they were intended for. When they're in metal and you're doing custom builds, you can actually like torque on them a little bit, not a ton, but uh, something like this, I cannot stress enough, so. Like, Still strong. Look at that, super strong. 
So now if we come over here, you can see we're perfectly lined up. So our paint marker did well. Our little red stuff, little drawstring. Now we can press it up into place. Beautiful. Clean. Come over here. Perfect edge. Pull off here. Push up. All right, let's do our self tappers and then we're done. Yeah. T25, T25 self tappers for plastic. Once you feel it start to sink, you really want to let off the throttle. So be very careful if this is your first time doing this because once these go loose and you strip them out, because you're creating a thread in the plastic when you do this. So I felt it sink, I let off the throttle, strong. And then when I take these in and on and off, if I need to work on the car, those threads are intact, they're not blown out. Because you'll blow them out and it'll hold once. And that's it. So that time I did slower speed and more pressure and that was more comfortable. I think if you hit something with this lip, it would just take the rest of the bumper with it. <laughs> Literally. I'm gonna put more pressure. Oh yeah, that's the move. More pressure, slower speed. Yes. Oh yeah. It helps that it's 111 out right now. Yeah, nice soft plastic. So what I'm finding, the jam is, so I'm gonna push it up in here, line up my hole, and then I'm gonna push enough till I hear that plastic start to make noise. And I kind of go, ooh. And then boom, it goes in right away. Oh. The first slip, I'm confident won't come off on me. <laughs> now for the fun part. See what it looks like. Mm. Oh, dude, it's so much lower in the front. I know. Look at that. It's not even lowered yet. Oh, this looks nice from this angle. It's gonna be crazy with the lowering springs. It's gonna look dirty. I'm big sad we didn't have the lowering springs on first, but it just makes it that much more hype once yeah. they're on. It's like the, it'll be the last chair. And it's a little higher than it should be right now because it just came off the lip. Yeah, lift. true. It's like monster truck right now. Dude, it, it looks really Audi premium from this angle now. Oh yeah. With the carbon exhaust tips, it looks good. I'm not one to go for side skirts, but I feel like this car might be able to pull it off. I need to see if they have some for this car. I don't remember. Just some like minimal ones. Yeah. Just carbon to tie it around, but yeah. if, if we don't have it, it should be fine. Should we go do some rolling shots of both cars? Snaps us some rollers. Let's get Wally. Yep. See you on the road. confirmed the lowering springs will be here tomorrow so if you want to see that install i'll have it right here where we lower the car as well as some other suspension modifications to make the golf car handle better it's going to look a lot better also i'm excited to see you over there if you're early it'll come out real soon next week